All right. I figure we'll go out and have a little bit of fun today. I almost grabbed the shooting fox with the flintlock conversion back to original formation. And uh, thank you to the viewer for, uh, so far I got one nomination. Um, four. Sorry, whenever I'm looking, this is a problem with walking in the woods. I'm always looking, I see something. And it's like every day I'm out here, every time I'm out here, I'm always looking, watching out for predators for my flock. We do have some hawks around. And uh, I've got owl decoys everywhere and CDs and stuff hanging for them. You know, so far this year we've been fortunate, haven't lost any. We have in the past lost a few to hawks. Um, and then we got coyotes and other animals that will sometimes come in. So anyway, um, yeah, I almost grabbed the uh, flintlock. And the uh, so far I've got Roxy uh, as the name. I do like that. I appreciate you giving me that uh, name, Roxy. Um, it makes sense because it's a rock lock, Roxy. And uh, it's a good whore's name for a whore gun. Uh, parts gun, whore it out, you know. <laughs> that was where we're going with that one. So it's still time, but I think uh, so far that was the only suggestion. I did come up with uh, Trixie after you said Roxy um, from uh, Deadwood, which Trixie was the whore in that series, which was great. Anyway, as I was grabbing that flintlock, I was like, you know what? I have not shot my Shenandoah 36. And uh, some of you may remember, I think I got a video on there where I got a red squirrel. And, um, man, I don't know what's going on in the weather or what. We've had uh, drops in pressure. I'm getting uh, my left shoulder, all that nerve damage. Uh, it's been tweaking. So wearing lots of lidocaine today. But yeah, um, the Shenandoah. I paid $375 for this, I think it was. And uh, was in good shape for its age. And it is definitely a fun gun. It's a cap gun. Uh, no parts are available according to traditions. And uh, I, oh, it's much better of a gun than traditions with my, uh, you know, whatever that uh, crappy inline G4 pursuit crap. Which I'm still working on. And I've still been monkeying around with the data on that. Um, I kind of got a somewhat decent group. Uh, still probably four inch group, three and a half, four inches. Um, using just a 50 cal lead maxi ball hand cast. But bigger, we'll go through here. We'll use 15,000 socks yoke, 36 hand cast and swage balls in here right now is a swage ball. I think I'm gonna throw some balloons down that I found in my uh, black powder kit. And uh, we'll throw those out and maybe we'll just do some uh, balloon shooting just for some fun today. Yeah, this uh, Shenandoah, if you ever find one, it's a heavier gun, but it is definitely a, uh, I mean, you know, people complain about traditions. The triggers are a little grindy. You can polish those up. But overall, I mean, nice buttstock, heavy, heavier block of wood, heavy barrel. You know, these big barrels uh, with small bores tend to be heavier than your larger bore guns anyway. Yeah, we'll do that. Shoot some uh, caps off. Same thing, if you ever find a uh, lock, and maybe one of you knows for certain, but the Shenandoah lock, I believe, is the same size, and I couldn't get traditions to confirm this for me, probably from a liability standpoint, but I believe the lock is the exact same one they use on their Kentucky rifles and Kentucky kits. Could be wrong, so if you know, if that's the case, you could always get a uh, flintlock drop-in, pull the bolster, and uh, ready to go. No. Oh. It would be nice to have both locks for them, but you know, changing a bolster out and getting to line up exactly the same every time without uh, wear, you know, does put some added undue uh, stress on adding and removing the bolster. So I think you pick one or the other for quite a while. Anyway, it is nice to have a cap gun that's always going to go off. So we're about at the range. I'm going to throw up some balloons and we'll just do some uh, fun shooting today, I think. Um, I may even put uh, some rounds on a target. I got another one of those little targets with the squirrels and crows. See what we're doing on this. I honestly cannot remember where I'm shooting after I changed that front sight. Let me see. That was a copper front sight base. A little too soft 
when I put it in there, um, the dovetail was just a hair small. So you can see in that picture, smashed a little bit. I kept it and uh, I hit the barrel a little bit. I had some tape on there. I was using a brass hammer, but uh, still caused a little bit of damage. Anyway, I'm gonna throw some, uh, throw some balloons up, set my other camera up and we'll be good to go. Real quick here, I wanna show you my most absolutely hated bag but also my most used bag. It's one of these. When I say hated, yes, it's a Duluth Scout Pack. Scout pack. Real deal. I say hated because I got it with debit card points from my old bank and like just annual usage and I when I swapped banks, I had all these points, so I got it came in but it was the unwaxed one there's no back support whatsoever and being that there's no chest strap it kind of falls off my body a little bit um, so I've got you know I've tightened it way the heck down and it's uh, you know not exactly I mean it just sits there there's no support whatsoever it's not like these new uh, things however at the same time it's the number one bag I grab so that said <laughs> Apparently, based on usage, it's the best bag I own. Do I think it's a worth the 150 bucks or whatever the hell they charge? I mean, I got mine on points, so absolutely, uh, it's worth that. Um, I wouldn't spend 150 bucks on a canvas bag from them. Uh, and I do own a couple other bags. I bought a high-end bison buffalo bag for my wife when she got a, a job promotion at a different company and got her, you know, their $390, $400 bag, spent some money on her and make her feel special. But... Um, you know, it for what it is, you can get a, a better bag, however, for period correct, apparently. Um, I just like it because I throw everything in it. It seems to hold up. I did add some electrical tape to the rollers on the bottom there because it's a super loud bag. But it is easy just to puke everything in there and take it to the woods, as I as attested to today. So I'm going to leave this camera down here running. we got some balloons behind me. We're going to try to call our shots. And if I recall correctly, uh, that's the gun I did when I was comparing, comparing 78 paces, uh, I think it was, to the Daniel Boone video three or four years ago, uh, three years ago maybe, sitting up there. So I'm going to go to the same spot, lean against the tree, and see if we can't uh, call our shots on these. Uh, in a true, typical fashion, as long as the camera keeps running, I'm going to call the pink one. What do you think? Okay, in theory, the other camera is rolling way down there. You can see the one pink balloon. There's a second pink balloon. The blue balloon, I can kind of see, is to the right of that green uh, balloon. Let's see what we got. So again, 15,000 sock shoot. Cap off, 20 grains of powder, I believe this one, I believe this one's shooting uh, true. So I'm going to hold dead center on the pink one. I'm going to go for the small pink one. I think it lived. Do it again. All right, shot two.
How about we go for the big pink one? Although it's waving around in the breeze, so. That ought to be good, I think. I shot you. This percussion blast went by. Yeah, so we uh, missed completely two times. I meant to do that. No, I'm actually now... Uh, this is why I actually started a YouTube channel. So, um, sharing information with a buddy. And then uh, I can always go back and watch my stuff. I probably need to go back and remember what I was loading this gun with. I know it's the, excuse me, I know it's the same patch thickness. Okay, I don't feel bad about this miss. It's where I was aiming <laughs> with a six o'clock hole. So that was, I hope that comes out on the video up here. I hope it's running because that wasn't too bad at all. So actually, I don't feel bad in the least. Here we go, let's see. We're still working. So check out that miss. Right under the, the giant. So we're pretty close. And then this was the other one. I don't remember if that was there. I don't see any other, but I... Yeah, so... That was pretty darn close. I'll take that. Let's do it again. I hope the video picked that up. I, mean, I, was, I was aiming right down in my V notch. Settled in. And then just slightly low. So I think, I think if I go to just to the top of that pink balloon, I think I could probably miss just as good as that last one. Or even put it through it. We'll see. Yeah, these are number 10 nipple, which is why my number 11 was having trouble with art. I also, those last two were uh, swage balls. This is a hand cast. Everything else is the same. And my, my just lost the nipple, or a uh, cap. All right, let's see. Uh, we got it. We moved up to 50 yards. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> she disappeared. I got my dose of Canadian smoke. Well, since I couldn't tell where I was missing, we're going up to the 32 yard line and I'm gonna put up uh, a squirrel target for uh, one of these. I'm gonna aim at those balloons first and then we'll go down here and see what's actually going on. This is loaded, but one of the neat things is, I don't know if you can see, the muzzle markings. I think somebody just mentioned that in one of the forums. I don't know if they came that way on the gun or somebody put them after.
small pink. What do you think? All right, since I'm trying to get better at telling people what I got, this horn I bought from a guy, an older gentleman on eBay a while back. Same thing with the strap. I made the 20 grain charge out of a larger charge one, 80 grain or 90, because I rarely shoot those and I have enough adjustables. The bag, I actually made. This is Hogs. Hog wrapped, uh, hog swayed over, and uh, five to six ounce veg tan uh, with an English uh, uh, English saddle finish in her pocket. Uh, nice uh, copper D rings, and then uh, with the strap I made as well. Made all the components. So if anyone's interested in those, I actually have some of these that I've made up brand new and I keep forgetting to try to sell them. So I may try to put those on Etsy or something. I've got some nice water buffalo hides as well. It's pretty thick, but very nice. So we are back and loaded. I'm at 32 yards. I've not shot this one in a long time, but it is a fun one to shoot. Alright, so at 32 yards, it's dead center, right through where I wanted to go. So we'll load up, do it again. And this is a Ted Cash capper. One of the, uh, you know, what I like about this one is you push down and slide out. Whereas the Polish capper, I don't think you slide out. I, mean, I haven't tried very hard. I just you lift, push down, and lift off. So, All right, since that was painfully uh, not as simple as it should have been, I'm going on the paper. Um, I'm going to aim for the center crow. I'm going to hold 6 o'clock, so basically rest, resting the crow right on the front blade, and we'll see where it hits. Middle crow.
camera's still working. We'll see where I was talking about and where I was aiming. And since I said it all ahead of time, we should be good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here, there was my two. I just missed one of those two, so hopefully the other camera picked it up. And there's another one. Um, and then I went right through here when I actually shot. I'm sorry, right here. So there was my other one when I aimed between the two, right here. And this is the one that got that uh, other balloon there. Here's my first shot, aiming roughly here. You are still on. Here's my second shot, and I actually came down lower. I actually hit right where I was, so then here, this is what I was talking about, where I was resting, right here on the body, and it went right there. And then there's that forehead one, which is, you know, a quarter of an inch left of where I was aiming, so it's more than tolerable. There you have it, 100% those misses out at 70. And my camera's hooked. So I, resting the crow on it, I hit right at the head. Okay, this one we're going to aim at the left crow. Same thing, 6 o'clock hold. Kind of floating it right on top. So these are 11 caps with a, a number 10 nipple. Uh, one of the things that I've seen a lot of people online, uh, especially new shooters, is talking about caps. And some don't realize there's a number 10 cap, number 11 cap, then there's different sizes of caps. And um, maybe we'll do a video one of these days on cap size. And uh, Volpes has uh, one of the viewers. Uh, he and I had a long conversation about caps one day off, uh, off channel. And um, size makes a difference having the proper fit one so I think uh, there's a lot to it I'm not exactly uh, uh, the greatest on it I know the differences between a 10 11 11 magnums there's RWS's there's some other uh, Remington's and so on so I think that might be a, a great topic for another show however just be knowing that this is a 10 nipple um, so it's a much thinner profile on the top um, the tens are a little, or I'm sorry, the tens are a little bit tighter. So, and this is a little bit smaller. So, these elevens are going on and falling right off. So, I'm going in left crow. And if this. I think, if this went where I think it went, it should be just below the feet. Because um, I actually dropped my blade just a little bit to try to give a little more um, to compensate for that inch high. But as I did so, I noticed right when I was pulling the trigger, I think it went exactly where I was pointing. So we're going to do it again, and I'll load it the other crow. We'll see what happens. Okay, we're going to go to the right crow. This time I'm going to rest the body on that front sight. And that one went right where the feet meet the body. So if that camera is still rolling, you'll see that. 32 yards. Which means that was probably all me missing.
got plenty of powder, plenty of balls and patches, but I've only got one ball out, so let's, uh, let's go for a headshot on the left steel target. I guess it helps to cap it. I had good dry fire practice there, and I was dead on. Now we're playing with gunpowder. Yeah, I mean, dead right where I was aiming. It's all me. Well, there you have it. Proof is in the pudding. Those misses were all me. Here's a cool one of my old patches from before. I'll save that use it later. No point in not reusing them. So if that camera's still working, you'll see where I was talking about on where I was aiming. And since I said it all ahead of time, we should be good. Yeah, I mean here, there was my two. I just missed one of those two. So hopefully the other camera pick it up. And there's another one. Um, and then I went right through here when I actually shot, I'm sorry, right here. So there was my other one when I aimed between the two right here. And this is the one that got that uh, other balloon there. Here's my first shot, aiming roughly here. Here's my second shot, and I actually came down lower, and I actually hit right where I was, so then here, this is what I was talking about, where I was resting, right here on the body, and it went right there. And then there's that forehead one, which is, you know, a quarter of an inch left of where I was aiming, so it's more than tolerable. There you have it, 100% those misses out at 70 were me. And our camera's still going, so hopefully, Hopefully, this makes for an entertaining video. So yeah, traditions. Cap lock. 10 and 11 caps were on there today. 11s were too big, 10s were uh, perfect. I had a mismatch in my uh, capper using Graf's 3F with a little bit of old lines for it in there. And um, ox yoke patches. That Traditions is a fun one. If you can find one of those old Shenandoahs in 36, I highly recommend you pick them up. Um, you know, they're hotter than a 22 mag loaded up, and uh, they got the hurting on there. And uh, yeah, so thanks for watching. Hopefully, uh, that was enjoyable. I know it was for me, it was a little, uh, a little odd missing with this gun because I remember hitting everything with this gun last time I used it, but it has been quite a while, and I feel bad because this is an awesome little gun. Actually, uh, out of the box to me, used still 100 times better than my shitty fox was when I got it and, uh, and I'll, tell, I'll be honest it's still those triggers are uh, not quite that gritty but they're, they're pretty smooth now they've been polished up a little bit but they still have a little bit of grit to them but this gun does shoot and it is solid it feels solid 